The next 16 will be clean energy. Or can it be clean energy? Can we have 16 terawatts of clean energy? And if so, which type of clean energy? So here are the choices. Uh, and I asked myself three questions. Is this source clean? Uh, is it financially viable today or will it be when the industry matures? Uh, and is it scalable? Uh, if we're talking about 16 terawatts, it has to scale to multi-terawatt levels, right? So is it scalable? So I went through all the best science out there, MIT and Caltech and Stanford and the DOE and whatnot, and I talked to a bunch of people about sources of energy, about transformation of energy, about uses of energy. And, and so he, here's, I put together stretch scenarios, right? I mean, rather than getting into the, the minutest details, I put together stretch scenarios. Uh, and I'm going to start, of course, with, uh, with uh, being in an agricultural country with um, uh, bioenergy. Uh, bioenergy, can it scale? Is it clean? Is it financially viable? The first thing that we need to know about bioenergy, the first thing we need to know about uh, green plants is that green plants are solar plants, right? What green plants do is take the sunshine and transform that together with other things, water and, 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 and land and fertilizers, and they transform that into biomass, which is a form of energy. And then we change that biomass into a, a form of energy that we can use, whether that's ethanol or whatever. Um, so if you look at it that way, uh, let's look at one of the most successful, quote unquote, forms of um, bioenergy out there, which is sugarcane. And sugarcane transforms 0.38% of the sunshine into biomass. So far, so good? So 0.38% of the sun is transformed into biomass. And if you change that to ethanol, the transformation is 0.13%. That's how much of the sun is transformed into bioenergy. Let's compare this with solar photovoltaics, which at today's conversion is 14%, which is 100 times more efficient than bioenergy. And if we use other types of solar uh, uh, conversion, CSP, concentrating solar power, we're talking about two to 300 times more efficient in processing the sun than green plants are. Just the fact that green plants only transform 0.1%, 0.2%, makes them not scalable, makes them not financially viable in the long term, just because of that because the physics of it have limits, because the photosynthesis process has limits, okay? So that's a problem with bioenergy. Um, but wait, there's more. Biodiesel, the example that I'm using is Jatropa, which is one of the most popular forms of uh, biodiesel seeds out there. It takes 19,000 gallons of water to produce one gallon of jatropa, of, of biodiesel. Now, it means that to fill up your car, you're using 200,000 gallons of water. Think about that for a second. There is no planet in this universe where that much water going into energy is sustainable. It, it's not going to happen, right? Especially since we're already in a water crisis in most of the world. So in fact, we're cutting back on the use of water, not adding to the use of water. 
So that makes bioenergy a tough proposition for financial and scalability purposes. Let me move to nuclear, which um, now is green because it does not generate CO2. Um, nuclear power is expensive. In fact, it's one of the most expensive forms of power out there. Uh, the first big wave of nuclear construction in the US, which uh, was 66 to about 86, uh, construction costs were on average three times the expected construction cost. Today, we expect um, $12 billion, 10 to 12 billion, to, uh, uh, to basically finance a nuclear power plant. Now, how does this, have that in mind, 10 to $12 a watt? And I'll compare it with solar in a second. And those costs are going up. The trend line is clear. Nuclear power is getting more and more and more expensive, not less. Uh, there was a recent report by Citibank that said the economics say no. That unless they're subsidized in every aspect, unless the government subsidizes the financing, the running and the selling of the power, meaning unless the government runs, takes all the risks in nuclear, it's not gonna happen. The economics say no. And Senator Bernie Sanders uh, basically wrote recently that to replicate the existing infrastructure in nuclear in the US, which is about 100 power plants, we taxpayers, will put $1 trillion to finance and subsidize the industry. So it's very expensive. Um, security is another issue. In reality, um, do we want civilian nuclear out there? Remember, we're talking about global energy. When there's no clear demarcation between nuclear power for military and civilian purposes. You know, it's, it's, it's an issue. Uh, is it scalable? Well, even if you ignore all of the above, even if we choose to print money, even if we choose to ignore security issues, can we scale? Can it make a difference? So it takes 10 years to build a nuclear plant. Assume that GE makes a deal with IKEA, and they decide to build a nuclear plant in two weeks. So fast two-week nuclear plant. And for the next 40 years, we build a nuclear plant every two weeks. Now, is this a stretch scenario? Yeah. So let's push the limits of what is possible. We would get one terawatt out of 30. So even if we push the boundaries of what's possible and ignore financial issues, um, this is going to be 3% of the world energy usage by 2050. Um, so we still have a gap. Keep moving. Wind? Can wind do it? What do you think? Love wind. Wind, clean as a whistle. Costs have gone down, financially viable. We have issues but like energy storage, but we can resolve them. Um, even now, it's uh, grid parity, and costs are still going down. Got to love wind, right? So it's clean, and it's financially viable. Is it scalable? So here's the exercise. If we put a wind turbine in every class three which is the minimum you need, class three site around the world, will get two terawatts, which is substantial. We can power the whole US with this. Now, we're talking about global, right? So we'll get two terawatts. So let's move on. Hydro, what about hydropower? Can hydro scale? Well, 
um, you know, the, 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 uh, as a bit of a background, uh, in, the, in the 20th century, Hydra was the sexiest form of power. Every government wanted one. The World Bank kept pushing. Easy financing, easy rivers, you know, move the people. Who cares, right? That's what happened with hydro in the, in the 20th century. Easy, fine, easy everything. And even with that, the limit, oh, by the way, 40 to 80 million people were forcefully resettled to build hydroelectric plants in the 20th century. That could be done back then. You think it can be done now? Even if we had easy rivers, which we don't, even if we had easy financing, even if we had all that, in fact, hydro has plateaued at about 0.7 terawatt. So we have no easy rivers and no easy uh, anything. So in fact, this is, this is a non-controversial topic. I don't think there's anybody who thinks that hydro can scale. And one thing the world does have a lot of is deserts. And it's keep, I mean, it's growing. Deserts are growing. They're not shrinking. So how does this compare with oil? Um, so let's still say that hydro can add 0.5 terawatts. Geothermal, the earth is a cauldron, right? The earth is pretty hot. Can we tap into that energy? It's cheap, it, it is financially viable when we can actually tap it. Um, but in fact, if you look out 2050, and uh, we can only, in a financially viable way, get 0.15 terawatts. So geo will not scale. So here's a summary. Um, even with stretch scenarios, we're going to have a major gap in our energy uh, by 2050. And these are stretch scenarios, right? Um, so the gap is going to be 10, 11 plus terawatt. And the question is, what can be done to fill that gap? And the only clean energy source, the only energy source that can scale to 10 terawatts is this source. That is the most powerful nuclear reactor that we know of. In fact, it's an infinite source of energy as far as we're concerned. If we only tap one hour, we get 120,000 terawatts. Remember, we only need 30. We get 120,000. And the sun is very democratic, by the way, unlike oil or coal, which are in only certain areas. The sun pretty much shines everywhere. We only need to convert 0.025% of the sunshine that we get, which is about an hour every year, to power the whole Earth. That's all we need. How hard is that? OK? Now, let me ask you. So less than 1% of the world's deserts can, in fact, power the whole world. Deserts, not our best land. Deserts, less than 1% can power the whole. If we use the same land surface that oil and gas use today to build solar power plants, how much energy could we generate? Surprise, 12 terawatts. So in fact, the land that oil and gas use today to generate a third of our petroleum needs, the same land we could use to generate three times all of our energy needs, plus we could export to the rest of the world.